Hi all, I have another very interesting game to show you today. Komodo, the official World Computer Champion, playing white against Leela. Let's see what happened. This is in the Chesscom Blitz Battle 2018. Five minutes each with a two second increment. E4 from Komodo. We have a Sicilian defense, knight f3, d6. D4, c takes. And now a delayed Smith Mora Gambit, believe it or not. One of my favorites. You can see my huge playlist on my own Smith Mora games. If you check out that, that might be of interest to you. Uh, but it's usually played much earlier. But here, okay, delayed, and it's actually accepted. Knight c6, bishop c4, a6. And we are about to transpose into something pretty standard if white plays queen e2. But uh, Komodo didn't do that, played queen c2. So, for example, queen e2, this is just standard uh, smith mora theory, uh, actually, where... It's it's pretty well trodden, and yeah, there's been a lot of games from this position. But Queen C2, yeah, a different spin on things. We have Knight F6, Rook D1, Bishop D7, Bishop F4, Queen B8, protecting D6 for a moment, Bishop B3, Bishop E7, Queen D2, H6, just letting D6 go here, not making an effort to protect it. So counter sacking the pawn, wanting to anyway. Uh, so here, actually, that's refused anyway. Knight A4 is played by Komodo. On taking, it's really mostly harmless. Bishop takes, for example. And then the king can stay in the center quite usefully, potentially. E5 doesn't quite work. Uh, if we look at knight takes, knight takes, king takes, it just leads to an equal position. So there's nothing really to fear here. So actually knight a4 was played, just leaving this d6 pawn alone for the moment, even though there's a lot of pressure on d6. White just avoids that. And queen c7 holds that b6 square intact. Now protecting b6 against the knight going there. Okay, so we have knight c5 using the pin. Okay, very nice in a way. E5. Leela commits to E5, weakening the D5 square, but given that the knight is not on C3, there's nothing that can easily exploit that so badly now. That D5 hole. Knight takes. Queen takes. The bishop drops back. We have Rook D8. Queen E3. Queen goes to G4 here. And this does hit the e4 pawn rather cheekily so before castling act some active operation here before castling bishop d5 protects e4 black castles here h3 the queen drops back to h5 rook a c1 has the queen side been neglected if you look at this position look at white's pieces they are glaring down the queen side and and white's piece and black's pieces by contrast are a bit stuck behind the pawn structure this bishop in particular stuck behind the pawn here it doesn't seem that promising at the moment for Leela we have knight takes d5 e takes knight b8 allowing an infiltration which many players would find scary but Leela has an idea here knight d7 to offer b7 as a counter gambit pawn so what's going on here so we're back to six pawns each However, okay, if the knight moves, then there's rook takes e7 here. The rook's kind of annoying on the seventh. We have f5 threatening a major f4. And we have queen e2 pairing that. Bishop f6. And now there's a threat introduced of knight c5, given that there's no rook takes e7 now. Knight c5 would be useful. b4 stops that. We have a5 trying to just sacrifice a pawn here for knight c5. White rejects that, keeping control of c5. On taking, this is very comfortable after knight c5, f4, e4. This is really dangerous for white. White can't play knight e1, for example, because of the uh, queen. So let's imagine knight d4 protects the queen. Okay f3 this is this is a dangerous position after bishop takes and uh then here e3 this is really dangerous so rook c2 e takes rook takes 
queen takes h3 this is really uh, very nice for black big advantage so a3 is played keeping things calm for a bit f4 but black is getting a really aggressive pawn structure a takes rook f8 which supports e4 now white blockades that pawn it's not going anywhere for a moment queen f7 in this position after this queen f7 in fact there's a naughty tactic available in the form of knight c5 being threatened which hits the queen so just to give a gist of that say white played rook c1 then knight c5 uh, so for example here rook takes knight takes this is just favorable uh, for black uh, it doesn't really uh, matter what white does here if here then bishop e7 black has a big advantage and if the other rook tries to support things here uh, it doesn't matter the bishop's holding g7 so black's doing very well here as well maybe just rook c8 for example uh, that's very good indeed for black so yeah white has to be cautious and played actually rook c7 and this does actually kind of prevent knight c5 in a way leader actually chose rook b8 here if we look at knight c5 in this position then rook takes c5 gets two pass pawns here connected and that should be an even position at the very least so we have rook b8 instead king h1 bishop d8 the rook goes to c6 bishop e7 protecting d6 knight e1 rook b7 preparing to double on that b pawn uh, i think leela's doing very well here because basically this bishop is also kind of it's pretty hemmed in this is an aggressive pawn chain for black queen c4 the bishop goes to f8 here f3 which gives, gives scope for the bishop going to g1 and participating on this diagonal if needed the rooks double knight c2 protects b4 okay knight f6 which ties white down a bit there's pressure on d5 here now ties white down the rook can't easily move it seems bishop g1 g5 and leader is actually playing super aggressively now on the king side h5 and there's a duality of this even if it doesn't break through to the white's white king it's in a way tries to guarantee good end games a form pawn on g3 does restrict the white's king uh white king in end games and that could later win the game if black's king is much more aggressive than the white king that's a game winner for later so queen a6 here we have um, queen h7 so now actually in this position rook e1 is played we have g4 yeah this queen h7 is very useful for g4 to discourage hg bishop h4 knight e8 queen c4 queen f5 queen e4 yeah there's pressure building up here on h3 so white wants to doesn't mind transitioning a little bit more to an endgame story but look at this after queen takes we do have f takes and now g3 this pawn wedge has long-term implications which maybe is difficult for traditional engines even the current official world computer champion to comprehend yeah the king or well, especially at this time control the king is going to be restricted later on you know unable to go to f2 it would have to go slowly back into the center maybe if it goes that route okay but also this pawn is providing an outpost square on f2 potentially we have rook a1 knight c7 bishop g5 and the king comes to the center bishop e7 so some more simplification in fact this bishop hasn't really got too much uh, option so it takes we have this end game which yeah the king is trying to get to the center so rook a8 it's tactically possible to do this even though this rook takes c7 check there's a knight on c2 here so white play rook takes a8 
if I have a quick look at rook takes c7 check this is just showing how favorable this pawn is with the outpost on f2 yeah it's just in black's favor this end game but the game continuation is is not so different knight a3 we have knight c7 not tempted by rook takes b4 here even though the rook is stopped from the from the check this position white would have knight c4 and at least equality here after knight takes d6 so leader is concerned about the d6 pawn and is ready now to protect d6 with knight b5 we have knight a5 rook b8 and the rook moves which means that knight c6 now is threatened for king king and rook king d7 h uh, not h4 knight c4 knight d4 rook b1 we have rook b7 knight d2 rook c7 yeah black's got a lot of the trump cards now not just an aggressive pawn chain but one which yeah so the, the rook if it gets to the second rank this is going to be a big advantage and that's what exactly is going to happen here knight f3 this gives black in fact a protected passed pawn now this is a protected passed pawn rook c3 we have king g2 king c7 the black king by contrast is super aggressive to the white king rook b2 h4 cementing the protected passed pawn and not allowing white any potential for h4 which might be useful some in some time uh, in some cases rook a2 king b6 rook a8 check and we see rook f2 yeah using that very very important outpost afforded by the pawn on g3 check uh, we have here rook takes f3 creating two connected passed pawns now so letting white have a passed pawn but is that as significant as these two the king is also super aggressive now and coming in to the game aggressively so king d4 here and white has two passed pawns but black's quick enough it seems to be able to stop them here and taking out white's pawn center yes this is getting to be horrible uh white is shedding pawns now and it's actually just a totally winning rook and pawn ending absolutely totally winning now yeah most of the damage had been done earlier and that's just very very easy after some spike checks taking all of white's pawns yeah pretty crushing stuff the game continued for a bit a little bit they're messing around okay queening the <laughs> messing around okay chat mate yeah <laughs> uh, I, I believe this was an instructive game the duality of some middle game operations you know often to get a form pawn is is meaning not only a good dangerous pass pawn potentially as shown but also outpost squares to be able to win other key pawns and make connected pass pawns but also a key difference is the king activity of black was so much greater going into that end game if you enjoyed this game then please click the top left box which you should appear soon uh, and you can become a member of chessbowl.net to play against other youtubers with the special uh, reference code 1053 you can also check in advance analysis of these games if you go to the master collection menu uh, so i hope you try that okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much